the Grade 1 listed Sankey Valley Viaduct in Newton Willows, also known as Nine Arches, is described as the oldest railway viaduct in the world. It spans 160 metres over the Sankey Valley and carries up to five trains per hour between Liverpool and Manchester. The viaduct, which was designed by George Stevenson, was constructed in 1830 and formed a crucial part of the Liverpool and Manchester Railway. Its nine arches with a span of 15 metres are supported on eight piers which rise up to a height of 21 metres. Construction of the viaduct started in 1828 and it took just two years to construct at a cost of £45,000 or £4 million at today's prices. The viaduct was designed to allow sufficient clearance for Mersey Flats to navigate the Sankey Canal. The Mersey Flats were double-ended sailing barges used to navigate canals and waterways in Lancashire and the River Mersey. Although the viaduct is not as long as the Ribblehead viaduct, it is no less significant and was a key part of what was the world's first intercity passenger railway with a regular timetable. Although it is often said that the Liverpool and Manchester Railway was the first passenger railway, that honour of course goes to the Stockton and Darlington Railway, which carried passengers in 1825. The Liverpool and Manchester Railway was, however, the first to rely on steam-powered locomotives. It was the first to be entirely double-tracked throughout its length and the first to have a proper signalling system. As for the claim that the Sankey Viaduct was the oldest railway viaduct in the world, I'm not sure if that's strictly true. Network Rail's website simply states that it is the first major railway viaduct in the world. I didn't do an exhaustive search, but I found the King's Mill Viaduct on the old Mansfield to Pixton Railway that opened to traffic in 1819, and there may be other examples of viaducts which opened around the same time or even earlier. That doesn't make the Sankey Viaduct any less significant however, as it is a truly impressive feat of engineering, and undoubtedly one of the first major viaducts in the world to carry regular passenger trains. The viaduct, which is approaching 200 years old, is now in need of restoration and is currently being wrapped in scaffolding so engineers can carry out a £3.8 million overhaul of the structure. The scaffolding that is being erected in itself is an impressive feat of engineering and is required so that engineers can safely reach every square metre of the viaduct stonework, allowing them to carry out extensive brickwork repairs. The four month long project will see brickwork repaired and repointed, historic metalwork repainted in heritage colours, the removal of weeds and plants, the removal of graffiti and the installation of anchors to strengthen the structure and secure any cracks. Network Rail's website states that the restoration will not only make sure it looks good to celebrate its 200th anniversary in 2030, but will also secure passenger and freight trains for the future too. So I wonder if that means there will be a big celebration planned in 2030 to mark the 200th anniversary of the opening of the Liverpool and Manchester Railway. In any event, I think it's incredible that the structure has been carrying trains for almost 200 years and will do so for decades more. It really is a testament to the engineers of the time whose structures have outlasted many more modern structures built since. But arguably that may mean that perhaps they were a little bit over engineered and I'm certain there's no way a 160 metre long, 21 metre tall viaduct could be constructed for £4 million in this day and age, even with access to computer aided design and modern machinery. If like me you enjoy looking at impressive engineering structures then it's well worth a visit. The viaduct itself is a 25 minute walk from Earlstown so it is possible to travel there by train. <laughs> 